good afternoon. Tom Christie back in the carving shop. Welcome to session three of carving a green wing teal drake. And today's session is going to focus on the head. So we'll begin with some layout work and then begin shaping the head and, and detailing that. Hey, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do that. It doesn't cost anything, but it helps me out. And uh, that's enough commercial. Let's get carving. I had made this top-down head pattern, so I'm going to use that to lay out the bill outline and trace that on using the center line to keep it in the middle of the carving. So I'm going to do that above and below, as you probably know, because I like to keep an eye on as I'm coping out the the bill especially on a small bird like this i mentioned that in the band song we can't afford to lose any wood that is supposed to be there um, so i'm going to use the coping saw to be careful and by having an outline on the bottom of the bird as well as on the top i can make sure when i'm coping that i don't get off kilter and cut off too much wood. Then I'm going to use my um, dividers and go to the pattern and I'm going to get this dimension from the cheek to the front of the bill and I'm going to transfer that here. So that gives me where the cheek should fall as I'm starting to cut out, cut wood off of the head on both sides. And then not everybody does it this way. I'm just going to show you the way I do it. I like to transfer that to this place where it meets the the uh, face and make sure I get that accurate on both sides like that and then do the same thing down below from that line that I just struck over to the bill so I know how deep to cut the bill same thing on this side And then I'm going to shape the head from the where the bill meets the face back a little past the eye. That characteristic V shape. And then on a green wing teal, we're going to want a little bit of a point in the crest on the back. N not super sharp, but kind of like that. And then I'm going to drop these lines here down the side of the face so I can kind of keep in mind where my cuts should end up out here because this is going to be the cheek so I don't want to remove material here because that's the widest part of the head same thing on this side I'm sketching kind of fast, but I've done this on the uh, Mallard Drake demonstration, so I don't want to repeat a lot of stuff that you've already seen. So keep that wide. Now I've got my guidelines, and I'll do the same thing underneath so I don't cut too much out of there. This uh, is a tucked head, so there's no neck to define here. It's basically going to be the shape of the head itself on the underside. So that'll just give me some guidelines down there. And now we'll go to the coping saw. Now I'm going to use the coping saw to very carefully follow that outline. Checking underneath, make sure I'm square with the coping saw blade. Couple of checks so I don't get off track. 
and I'm going to cut right down to where the bill meets the cheek, but go no further. And, th and this is what I like to do. Um, just cut this in the way we've drawn it and very carefully meet up with that other cut. So we don't want to gouge into the side of the bill with the coping saw. If that gives me a shelf that I can refer to later, I know exactly where the bill meets the face. Now I'm going to take this down, go, starting from that starting point and angling down past the eye. This is not precise. I mean, we're just removing rough wood here so we don't have to grind all of that off. Doing the same thing on this side. And again, being very careful because we can't afford to lose any material on this bill. It's pretty dainty to begin with. Okay, taking this side off. You can see I kind of cut down to that guideline that I gave just past the eye. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Having the lines on there kind of helps you keep it symmetrical. At least it does for me. Might not be for everybody. So I've got the two angle cuts made. And now I'm going to go in and cut these off. Don't want to clamp that too hard. It's nice soft tupelo, so I don't want to leave vice marks on the side of the cheeks. So I'm cutting down to that guideline again. Both sides. Okay, there we go. So now we've got a basic shape we can work with and do our grinding. Just a couple of views of that before we go to the grinding bench. All right, a little more layout work. Just penciling in the, the cheeks again, just below the eye. Back to here, just to keep that in mind that I don't want to remove wood from that cheek area right now. And then uh, I put on my pattern the crown width, and you may want to do that. It, it's pretty helpful if you ever carve the same decoy again. You've got it right on the pattern that I know the crown width is inch and a quarter. So I'm going to do five eighths on either side to give me that inch and a quarter crown width. And I'm going to go right from the notch to that widest part of the crown, and then it's going to feather back into the, the crest back here. Same on this side. And that gives me <clears throat> some guidelines to remove this wood and narrow the head. Before I do that, I want to define this notch area, and that becomes kind of an anchor point for formation of the bill and formation of the crown. By the way, while I'm carving, I just like to do multiple coats on the keel, and I use a deft semi-gloss wood finish and I'll end up putting maybe five coats on that walnut keel to make sure it's nice and watertight. Okay, I'm going to use this little cylindrical ruby bit to define the notch. And I have sped up the video during these carving sequences just so they don't take so long to watch. And I'm just lowering both sides of the notch a little bit. You don't want to dig too deep in there and defining where that notch uh, from the crown meets the bill before we move to narrowing the crown area of the head next. 
All right, now I'm gonna to shift to the Fordham and use a three quarter inch bullet nosed saber tooth burr and use that to carefully narrow the crown and form the cheek area. You really have to watch your grain. Uh, these burrs can snag grain if you're going in the wrong direction. So just go at it carefully. You can see I'm just kind of taking that down and beginning to round the bill as well and pull that into the that notch area into the crown. And now I'm rounding the cheeks. Going to the other side, doing the same thing, taking that crown area down to that dimension that we um, set. And then forming that into the Feathering that in as you reach the back of the head, it kind of curls back, rounding the bill some more. I'm not going to do too much roughing with the uh, saber tooth and the Fordham on this head. Uh, and the Tupelo is so light and soft, it goes pretty quickly. I'm just generally rounding things and getting it roughed out. And then I can move to the smaller bits and sanding drum to take things down further. Okay, we're going to call that good for now. And we'll move to the other carving tools. I'm sure you noticed in that video, there's not much surface area to hold on to. A green wing teal tucked head like this. And with that Fordham... Uh, you just need to be very careful because you're getting pretty close to, to hands. So go very slow. And I'm going to shift. I've got the, the quick rough work done with the Fordham. Now I'm going to shift to the Marathon Guesswine grinder. A little more control. And uh, I really don't need all of that grinding power for this size of head. A little more layout work. I want to go in with the guess wine and define where the bill meets the face and this little return area that leads up to the cheek and grind that in and I'll use this little cylindrical um, ruby bit to do that. All right, I'm gonna speed up the video again. I'm just using that ruby bit to follow my guidelines, kind of define and narrow the bill so that it meets the notch at the top there. So I'm removing material both from the, the face of the bird and the bill itself. I use this little ruby cylinder a lot because it has grit on the end of it as well, and so it really is a valuable tool to use. Now I'm switching to a little triangular shaped ruby bit, and I like to use this bit to kind of do some general rounding. So rounding the bill and working on uh, where the face meets the bill. But in general, right now, I'm just taking wood off the bill, being careful there and uh, taking some wood off the face so that it meets up with the bill. Now I'm using my dividers to get that measurement back from the tip of the bill to the rictus area so I know how far to cut back in that area. So I'm going to pencil that in. Uh, I've sped up the video again, so I'm not drawing that fast. And now I'm going to use uh, that little cylindrical ruby bit again. I'll zoom in here a little bit and we're going to remove material down to the width of the bill in that area. Kind of in the corner where the upper and lower mandible meet. It's an important part of the bird in uh, defining that. Now I'm 
making a mark from my pattern where that upper and lower mandible meet. And I'm going to use that little uh, pyramid shaped bit to take material off the face to blend it in to that area now that I've taken it down to the, the bill width. And then just generally shape things up between the face and the bill in that area. Now I'm going to use my dividers again, make sure I have that location accurate, and pencil in the, the dividing line between the upper and lower mandible. And then we're going to use a knife to separate the upper and lower mandible. Now I'm going to use a, a knife to go in and define that little corner where the rictus is. A little bit of a drop and very carefully relieve or score this area between the upper and lower mandible. Shift around, kind of dive in, and this is soft tupelo, so we need to go lightly and then shift underneath and again very carefully score multiple times up to where the upper mandible is and we want to remove this little triangular piece of wood like that so Gives us a nice little shadow cast there between the upper and lower mandible. I'll do that on both sides. Now I'm going to use a tiny little ruby ball to go in there and clean up the rictus area and just remove any remaining wood or scraps and smooth things out up in there. Now there's a little bit of a chin to be formed down here and I'm penciling that in and I did slow the video up to normal speed for knife use and I'm just making a cut there and then a cut in this direction to remove that little slice of wood and define that V area underneath. The grain is kind of crazy in this particular location in the tupelo so I'm just doing a little bit of gouging here, even though the knife is relatively sharp. So I'll keep going back and forth and eventually work that piece out. And that forms a little bit of a chin, and now I'll use the triangular shaped bit to just smooth things out under there. and some more general shaping. I'm just rounding that area, smoothing things out, kind of further defining where that lower mandible meets the face. There you can get a look at it. And then forming that V-shape underneath as well. Now that we have the bill rough shaped, I want to get the eyes set at the proper distance between and I've got a dimension here that I know the eyes need to be that wide and you can see I can't I can't get back to the eye location with that dimension so I'm going to have to take some wood out here around the eye on both sides and relieve that area until I can get this uh, caliper back in the correct position for the eye set. I'll speed up the video again. I'm using that little triangular shaped ruby bit and kind of creating a trench there in the eye groove and then smoothing that both towards the cheek and then in the other direction up towards the crown. 
to take that dimension down so that we can get these eyes at the proper dimension between them when you look at them from the front. This is an area that a lot of people make mistakes on. The eyes are either way too wide or way too narrow set, and it really detracts from the look of your decoy. So use your reference dimensions and make sure you get that those eyes set where they're supposed to be. It'll really make a difference. So I'm just checking and I still have some work to do to take that down a little further. So I'll keep working that and uh, we don't have to watch that repetition, but basically I'm gonna keep working this until I get to that dimension I'm looking for. Just a little final work, another check, and I'm right where I wanna be now, so I can move ahead. Now I'm gonna use that bullet nose, three quarter inch saber tooth burr. This is a fine burr, and I'm gonna round the crown. Now that we have the eyes set at the proper dimension, the crown width set, we can round the head. We wanna avoid big flat spot on the top of the head, particularly on a Drake green wing teal. The head, the crown narrows at the top and is pretty rounded. So we want to make sure we do some work and, and don't leave a Frankenstein flat head from the front on this bird in particular, but also on most other birds. I've got that rounded kind of to where I think it should be, at least rough. You can see how round it is from the front there. Now I'm gonna use a sanding drum with about 120 grit and or 250 grit in that neighborhood anyway. And I'm gonna go in and, and do some rough sanding to take out grinding marks and tool marks and any flat spots. You can see I still have the center line on uh, the head of the decoy and that's so that we maintain the, the profile that we work so hard to to draw during the pattern stage. So we wanna leave that center line on there until the last thing that gets sanded uh, before you seal the bird. Okay, that's, that's looking pretty good now, rough sanding wise, and now we can do a little bit more shaping on the head. I'm gonna pencil in some uh, cheeks and a little crease there in that tucked head position, you tend to see uh, some bulges there. It gives a, the bird some character. And I'm gonna use that triangular ruby bit to grind a little trench first, and then smooth that out in both directions and round things so that it's, it's not too obvious but it casts a nice little shadow and gives the bird a little bit more character than just a flat carving. So I've done that on both sides and I've kind of got it rough shaped the way I want it. You can see a little bit of a shadow cast there. Now I'm gonna use my sanding drum and just use that to smooth things out. Again, we don't want a hard trench there that is gonna cast a, a real harsh shadow you want to keep things soft and round. And the sanding drum helps that, blends things out, and just takes out tool marks and smooths things out. Here's a look at the face. So that that's roughly the way I want it. You can see from the front a little bit of shadow cast. Then I'm going to use some 120 grit um, Swiss sandpaper and just smooth things out. The hand sanding gets areas that are hard to get with the, uh, with the drum, but you can get 90% of the way there and uh, with the drum and then just finish it by hand. Looking pretty good. Okay, I think we'll call that a wrap on session three of carving the green wing teal drake. We've got the tucked head carved and ready for detailing. In the next session, we'll work on 
roughing out the body and getting it shaped up in similar fashion to the head. And then we'll work on the details after that. Hey, I wanted to thank those of you that have subscribed and I really want to thank the people that are leaving comments and suggestions. I appreciate it. The likes are appreciated as well. And it makes it feel like this is worthwhile. Uh, lots of great feedback from people that are getting value out of the videos. So thank you for that. And uh, until next time, this is Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to you.